you uh, mentioned uh, in, in the break that uh, you've been looking at the rosters for uh, not only Indiana, but Purdue both. You'd already done that. Purdue is pretty easy because we know they've got everybody back. Uh, virtually the same team as they had last year, which won the Big Ten, won the Big Ten tournament, uh, flopped miserably in the NCAA tournament again. But uh, that's they, they have a very, very strong and now experienced lineup. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, is that, yeah, it's, it's mostly the same, but there's a few differences. The biggest differences are that they are – they brought in three guys. They have three new guys that were that they knew were going to have, but it's going to be different. So they have Will Berg, who's the seven foot two redshirt freshman. Um, Cam Heidi, who's the the extremely athletic wing. We kept seeing him in warm ups last year. Probably the most the best athlete on Purdue's team last season, taking off his red shirt this year. Uh, and then Miles Colvin, um, the the uh, son of Roosevelt Colvin, the former Purdue football great. He is a going to be a true freshman this year. Played for the the USA U19 World Cup team. Those three guys, it creates a real back uh, kind of log jam in that rotation. It's really unclear how they're going to divvy up minutes because there are so many talented dudes on that roster. Um, and uh, even Trey Kaufman Wren, I like Matt Painter said that they're going to try to play him at four a little bit this year because they like his scoring even off the wing uh, and they think he can be kind of a prototypical three and D guy on the perimeter. And that wasn't a role we saw him play at all last year. So I think Purdue is going, it's the same personnel. I think they're going to play slightly differently this year. I would expect them to be a little bit more athletic. I would expect them to be somewhat more perimeter oriented. Um, I, I think that the, obviously getting the ball into Zach Eady is going to be a huge part of what they do. That's not going to change. Um, he's, he's going to go get probably 20 and 10 just about every night. But I do think there's going to be a little bit more talent on the perimeter. And I think they're, they're going to be, be able to shoot just a little bit better this year than they did last year. And so my guess is, because last year they were, they were 29 and 6. It's hard to improve on that. My guess is that their record is slightly worse this year, but they're actually a better team overall would be my guess. I'd like, I, I think they'll compete for the Big Ten again, and I think they'll be, they'll be right there at the end. Well, there's no doubt they'll compete for the Big Ten, but yeah, that's an interesting comment because we receive so, so on, in our comments here we receive Purdue's been figured out um, and that they'll finish third in the Big Ten. That's a projection, but uh, I, I guess my question is, Dylan, is this because the year Purdue got to the Elite Eight was they had a more of a motion offense. Matt Harms was able to move around the floor and it created you know guys were able to attack the basket and obviously you had Carson Edwards, which makes a big difference. Yeah. Is that what you expect them, have them to utilize Zach Eady? And I know I'm not there every day or anything, but in some of the videos that they're they're promoting or sending out via social media, I mean, Zach is behind the three-point line or he's taking free throw extended jumpers. Do you expect him to be moving more? Because last year it was, you know, he was basically anchored down in the paint, get him the ball and see what happens. Do you expect a little bit more movement? Is that maybe the biggest change you're expecting this season? There'll be a little bit more. I, I just I think Zach Eady is not Matt Harms, right? Matt Harms is a right. different kind of player, and, and well, Matt Painter. Him around. Right. But he's doing works. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that that's true, right? But like Matt uh, Matt Painter makes a big deal about and has always emphasized, like you fit your system to the personnel that you have. Matt Harms was a guy who was comfortable on the perimeter. He was a guy who was comfortable slashing to the rim. Zach Eady is he's athletic. He's more athletic than people give him credit for, but he's still not that guy. Um, and, and the, his Post, his post touches are so efficient that they'd be um, that they would be fools not to have him in the post on a regular basis, right? Um, and, and so I think there will be some more of him on the perimeter just because that's what the NBA wanted, and I think they want him uh, to just kind of be able to showcase his game a little bit more. And, it's, and they'll they'll experiment with it earlier in the season, see what happens, see what teams do with it. Um, and I think that'll be an interesting wrinkle they can add because, as you said, you, the, the the comment that you had was right, which is that they were figured out at the end of last season. I yeah. do think with the the new the new personnel they have this year, I think it'll be a little bit different. I think teams will have to adjust slightly, uh, and we'll see how long that takes to kind of adjust to. But Nickel also makes a good point. They did have schedule advantages last year by virtue of having the easiest schedule in the Big Ten, uh, and that ho hopefully will not be the case this year. But it, it will make a difference, although. He, uh, Braden uh, Smith and Fletcher Lawyer are a year older and, and wiser, which is going to benefit Purdue. If you have a tougher schedule, that has to elevate too. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting because you've got two definitive teams that are 
one A and one B with Michigan State and Purdue, uh, and then Indiana. We don't. Uh, Indiana is, is a question mark. Not yeah. because I don't think they're going to be good. They're just a question mark. You've got six new faces, uh, all of which are important. Going to be important players. So it, there's no way that people uh, like I know the fans will, would like to say, "Oh, Indiana's going to win this, win that." I, I'm not going to say that because I, I don't know jack about what they're going to do because of all the new faces. Yes. I mean, absolutely, right? And that's we knew that going into this offseason, right? They had so much to replace, um, especially after Tamar Bates and Jordan Geronimo hit the portal. Um, and, and they went out and they got players like Mike Woodson went out and got the players necessary to succeed. I, I think that that's kind of the way I put it. Is he got the players necessary to succeed. Now he has to coach them up. Now, now he has to figure out how do these pieces fit together because I think they do have the pieces. It's just a question of how long does it take Woodson to figure out how to put them together and once he puts them together in the correct order, how long does it take that group to gel? Um, and I think that those are the two biggest questions facing Indiana this year. Um, I, I do think that they have a little bit more um, uh, athleticism and talent than, I, than I, they did. Significantly more athleticism and talent than they did a couple of years ago. I think Woodson is starting to get the players into the program and, and shaping it the way that he wants it to be. I think that's that's an unambiguous good thing. I think he's done a very good job with that. Um, they're going to be much more... Uh, perimeter oriented this year. We already heard Malik Renew say that there's going to be fewer post ups this year. Although they'll still do a little bit of that, um, but we're 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 starting to see Woodson's vision with the kind of the motion offense, the the kind of the fast pace, get up and down, um, ball screen heavy, and then on defense switch everything and and be versatile. I think that's kind of what we're starting to see. Um, and now they they have some of the guys in there that can do that. It's just a question of how long it takes to come together. And Indiana has to learn how to win because last year with they had you know experienced uh, Trace Jackson Davis that they should have won the Big Ten last year, even though they had the tougher schedule. They lost a game at Iowa that they had no right losing, uh, and losing at home to Northwestern, losing at home to Iowa again. They lost to Iowa twice. They had every every opportunity to win the Big Ten last year by sweeping Purdue and but and missing it by one game. So they all these new faces, they're not all freshmen, but it's still you've got a, a group that has not played uh in the Big Ten, has not played together, and that's going to take a minute to get that together. Yeah, it absolutely is. And last year IU got a little bit unlucky just because the 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 timing of the injuries to Xavier Johnson, Ray Thompson threw them for a loop right as the Big Ten season was getting underway. Uh, uh, and it, it, that one and four start just kind of took them pretty much out of contention. Um, but they 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 were a Big Ten championship quality team last year when they were healthy. They just weren't healthy for most of the season. Um, and, and I think that um, on that note, I think that Xavier Johnson is maybe the most important player in Indiana's roster this year. I'm not saying he's their best player. I'm not saying he's going to be the MVP of the team. But I'm saying he's the most important player because he's the guy with the experience in the backcourt there. I know Trey Galloway is in his fourth year now, too. But Xavier Johnson is the MVP of the team. Right. He, he's the one with experience running the show. He's the one that's going to have to get everyone lined up. He's the one that's going to have to get everyone shots, right? And, and that was the thing is that um, when he first got here to IU uh, in 2021 22, uh, he was a, basically a guy who you could put the ball in his hands. And if the ball wasn't going to Trace, it was going to X. We, uh, we all knew that, right? I don't think that's going to be the case this year. He's going to have to be more of a facilitator, more of a distributor, and make sure everyone gets the shots that they need. And that might cut into his own shots a little bit. I think we're going to have to see um, how well he does at doing that. I think that's going to be an adjustment for him because he's always been a score first guy because he had to be. He was on teams that demanded that of him. I don't think this team is going to demand that of him. There's other scorers on this team. Um, they're going to want him to get his own shot every once in a while. Um, but most of the time, they're going to be wanting him to facilitate to Kalel Ware or Malik Renu or Mackenzie Mbako. Um, and and they're going to, he's going to need to adjust to that. I think that's going to be huge as to how he does that and how long it takes him to do it. Well, I think the biggest question is going to be, what is Trey Galloway's role? Right. Because he's the number two guard, which is a scoring guard, but he has not been a scorer. Uh, and they already have a facilitator in Xavier Johnson. So what is his role going to be? I know what his role needs to be, but yeah. what is it going to be? Right. And, and yeah, I, I think he has the capability uh, to beat guys off the dribble and get to the rim. We saw that significantly more as when he was a sophomore than, than last year when he was a junior. 
Uh, I actually was a little bit disappointed last year that he didn't get to the rim more often. Now, part of that was because Trace was just so good that he didn't need to. But there were some games where I wanted, where they were struggling to get buckets, and I was wondering if he would try to take over the game. Quite frankly, um, and I wonder if we'll see a little bit of that, a little bit more of that this year. I think the biggest thing for him uh, is that there's so much talent on the court around him in that starting lineup that he's he's going to need to knock down shots. Right? They're going to need him to be for um, for all intents and purposes. They're going to need need him to be Miller Comp. This year, right? He's going to get that level of open better shots. Miller Cop. Right, exactly. He, they're going to need to get. They're going to need to get. He is going to get open shots because of the talent around him, uh, and they're going to need to, him to knock those down. He knocked down forty six percent last year, but that was on low volume. They're going to need him around forty percent at higher volume, I think, to be successful this year. And Indiana has, with all these new faces, we we don't know who's going to be what. Is it going to be Mbako? Is it going to be Khalil Ware? Is it going to be a uh, uh, Oh gosh, darn it! Uh, a name that's already there. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Malik, right Malik Renew. Malik Renew. Uh, there are so many different options now. Indiana didn't have this athletic, these athletic options last year. Right. So, and Xavier's got to get in tune with them. But so does Trey Galloway. But you've got other guys coming. Gabe Cops, uh, CJ Gunn. There's the guys that we're not talking about that were already here as well. We don't know how well they've improved and what they can do. Can someone step up and push? Uh, Trey Galloway for minutes, uh, whether it's C.J. Gunn or Caleb Banks, uh, that they need they need scoring out of that number two spot without question. That's the difference between being a, 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 an average team or better than average team and a really good team. Right, and I, I think I, I I was a little bit surprised they they did they haven't been able to fill out that that last guard spot because I do think there's some minutes there available for someone that wants to come in. I would expect that they're still looking um, and trying to fill that out, um, but. I'm, I'm fascinated by C.J. Gunn. I, I, he is so athletic, and I know he struggled significantly last year, and there were times he didn't look um, like he, he was he really knew exactly what he was supposed to be doing on the court. But I, I think that there is star potential there. I think as athletic as he is, he could be a real uh, a real boost to that offense if he can if they can just get him the ball in space and let him attack the rim. Um, and and I, I'm fascinated to see if he can make a leap this year. I think he gets some significant minutes off the bench.